it's finally happening. If you follow me on Instagram, you already know exactly what this video is going to be about, but you are going to get some insights today about my journey to becoming a digital nomad. So far on my channel, I basically only or ever talk about online business, what it's like to run a digital marketing agency online, my experience as a marketing coach, and kind of some insights because we work with other online business owners. So what is it like to be an online business? What are the typical problems that you have? And with this, I've met an awful lot of people who are like travelers, they are nomads, they bounce from continent to continent and keep all of their business at their fingertips wherever they go. Now, when I was 18, I was obsessed with the concept of being somebody who traveled and like how could you embed travel into your job into your living and into still making good money and doing well I really was going to start the process and I wanted to go on a gap year and like explore the world and get to see a little bit more of what's out well after some talking to from my dad mostly he quite rightly said that I probably wouldn't have gone to university if I went on this gap year, I probably wouldn't have done some of the other things that I had planned, like living in London for a few years. So I ended up backing out and not doing the gap year and just going straight from school to university. But it's always been one of those things that's kind of played on my mind of like, what would it have been like if I was a little bit more traveled? So you might be wondering what I'm getting at. And yes, spoiler alert, I am starting the process of taking my business not just online, but taking it global. This September, myself and my boyfriend Josh, who also works for me within my business, had set a plan that we were going to go to Bali for one month as an extended holiday and we were going to work out there and just have a little bit of time away from the UK and living in this, this lovely, beautiful place. I'd always wanted to go. It's been years since Bali came on my radar and I even booked a hotel that I saw a vlogger go to like way back when. And that's what kind of stemmed the holiday was we got, wanted to go to this incredible resort and then kind of extend our time out because we could do it. It's a really long flight for us to get to Bali. It's about 18 hours. So we wanted to make the most of all of that time spent on a plane and actually be out there for a little bit of an extended period. And that was hugely exciting in and of itself. I was telling all my family about it, all my friends. I had an itinerary for every single day booked up on my phone. We were bouncing all over the different areas of Bali and we had some Airbnbs in mind that we were going to book as well. And actually one of my family members threw a spanner in the mix because as we were talking about it, we were saying, it's gonna actually save us money when we're out there. And my aunt turned to me and said like, why don't you do it for longer then? So after this conversation with her and a little bit more research, we actually decided that we were going to change the format of this trip. And now we are going from September 2nd to November 30th, spending three months in Bali to use this as a trial of how we're getting on with working away with the intention for next year then to be able to travel more far and wide. So I wanna break down a couple of questions that people in my life have been asking me and explain to you all why we're doing this and what we're planning. So the first big question that we've been getting is why was this even on our radar on the first place? Other than just wanting to travel, what has spurred us on to actually like let go of the lease of our house and move for an extended period of time? The answer is honestly the cost of living crisis that's happening within the UK right now. Myself and my boyfriend are renters and we've been trying to get on the housing market for the last year or so and if we had some really rotten luck where we haven't liked an awful lot of the properties that we've viewed our budget for what we had in mind to buy with the big huge inflation in house prices that has happened recently has meant that we now would have to spend about forty thousand pound more to get a type of property that would be comparable to what we were looking at like pre-pandemic when we were even setting that budget and with all of this in mind it just doesn't feel like the right time to buy but we're spending more and more money renting so it's becoming harder and harder to save more money so that we can purchase in the future so when we then saw that living in somewhere like Bali would mean that we were saving over 600 pounds a month between us on our bills and that for that amount of money, we would be able to eat out for food every day and live a different lifestyle. It really was a no brainer. It was such an easy decision, especially because all of my work is on my laptop. I naturally 
don't work in typical office hours anyway. I tend to split my days from a kind of nine till 12 and then a six till 10 or an evening shift. And that's the way that we would also work if we were in a Bali time zone because of the, the time difference between the UK. So it just makes sense to us. And the next question I get is why Bali? <laughs> and other than have you seen it, I don't really have a huge answer here. We don't know anyone in Bali that would mean that we want to go there specifically. It literally stemmed from we were going to Bali for a holiday. The idea just kind of grew. And Southeast Asia has always been appealing to me in general. But Bali, I've seen lots and lots of pictures of. A few of my friends have gone there and kind of rubbed it in my face about how beautiful it is. So, I mean, we'll see when, we out, when we're out there whether it lives up to the hype or not. But the only reason why is because it's so pretty. And the other questions that I've had have been much more practical. They've been much more what sort of questions. So the first one is, what am I going to do about my business? And I, I kind of look, look over to my computer user whenever I say that and honestly it shouldn't really impact my work very much. We're still going to be working. This is not just a, a three months off. This is a three months in a different location and if anything I think it actually might be beneficial for my career because so much of what I do is focused around content creation and it can be hard to get inspiration when I'm in like the same room every day as to what I could create. I think with having this beautiful scenery and with having the journey to Bali being something I can talk about I actually think it's going to make part of my job with my personal brand and my content creation a lot easier. The only thing that I'm a little bit hesitant of and that I'm going to be really upfront and honest about is managing the team. So we're going to have three team members that are still going to be in the UK time zone that I'm very very conscious that I need to be available to them whenever possible. As far as the time zone's concerned, 9am in the UK will be about 4 or 5pm in Bali. I should be awake and able to answer questions until around midnight at the very latest, which should be kind of past midday in the UK as well. So knowing that I'm going to be available to the team for a good few hours of each day makes it feel a little bit easier, but we're also taking steps within the business to make sure that systems are really really tight. We've been having some meetings internally about how we can make sure that the way that we do things digitally is like foolproof. And the other thing that we're doing is we're really leaning into support from the team themselves. So I've always wanted to take myself out of the business a little bit more and with that in mind we're actually going to be kind of upskilling some of the staff. Some of the team have been with us for a little while now. The the most recent member of staff is just hitting the like roughly six month mark. So now is the perfect time to start kind of handing over some of that responsibility. Some of the account management has already been handed off and is being done fabulously. So we're just trying to use the fact that some of the team have already been with us for a while and naturally we want to give progression to everyone's career. So I am left with literally no worries that we're going to be fine and that it shouldn't impact work very much. I think the only thing that will be difficult is timing calls and making sure that all my calls are fit in in morning slots. And um, But again, some of my clients are in Dubai, some of my clients are outside of the UK, so it shouldn't be an issue for them. It's going to be easier. It's only going to be the people in the UK that I'm going to have to have like a 11 a.m. cut off point or whatever for when I can do meetings. And then the other what that I want to touch upon in this video just really quickly is what you can expect from this channel moving forward and how this will impact your experience with me as a viewer. So first and foremost it should give some more exciting content for you. I'm going to be taking you on the journey with me to become a digital nomad and I'm going to talk about all the hurdles that I come across, whether it's when I'm still here in the UK planning or whether it's when we're out there. I already do a little bit of vlog content here and there, so I'm going to still be doing some of that and showing you our travels, but also taking this new view of not just how I work as an online business, but how I work as an online business owner abroad. So there shouldn't be much difference from what's happening in terms of the content coming out. It's just going to be much prettier locations. <laughs> On that note, I do just want to take a minute to pause and say if you were interested in finding out anything specifically or you've got any topics that you'd like me to cover about becoming a digital nomad, please do leave them in the comments below. 
and make sure that if you want to come along this journey with me that you subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you get all of the updates as they come out. One of the things that I think is going to come up a lot in this content is how I'm balancing enjoying the scenery, enjoying the location and work and probably lots of really tasty food. <laughs> So don't forget to follow me on Instagram and TikTok for more day-to-day -day updates on how I'm practically getting my life sorted to pack up and move to Bali. And I will see you again soon.